So, I moved to Linux. You have no idea how much trouble the script of this video gave me. Not only is there so much to talk about regarding my experience moving to Linux, but every time I think I'm done writing this script, I learn something new that makes me look at Linux a different way. So to avoid redoing the script again, I will specify that this script was written on the 27th of May. Documenting my experiences of 9 months using Linux as an operating system, 3 months of which were to completely replaced Windows for me. I don't want to get very technical on very specific things because the last two scripts I've written were very rambly. But I expect many of my watchers don't have much of an idea when it comes to Linux. So I'll explain the basic stuff for clarity. Mind you, this video is no expert advice. There's still a lot for me to learn in this platform. If I encourage you in any way to give Linux a try, I may not have the answers if you have any questions, as many other people in the community can explain it better than I can. I'm no stranger to Linux. I have tried different distros of Linux in the past. I was very curious about Linux a long time back, but I'm not programming oriented, so Linux to me had a pretty steep learning curve at the time. The first few distros I tried were Ubuntu and Linux Mint. Distros is what they call the different flavors of Linux. You're probably used to the different editions of Windows, like Windows Home, Windows Pro, and a long time ago, Windows NT. In Linux, it's different. It's more like people and communities built their own version of the OS using components common between each other called kernels. There are hundreds of different distros out there, some even based on each other. The reason why there are that much is because many communities have worked and tailored to make distros for their particular use case. Some are made to give people full control of their system. Some want privacy, some made as a joke, and some, like myself, just want to move to an alternative to Windows and or Mac OS. The reason to the recent change was unintentional. Around the time I was working on the reworking of Roses on RPG Maker, the current demo was not released at the time, and I had received a message saying that the Cyberhole Prototypes Linux version did not run. At the time, I did not know how to sort the problem because I did not have a Linux machine at the time, so I told them to use Wine until I sorted out. Wine being a Linux-based framework that runs Windows software. It's notorious for not being perfect, but I figured it would do for something as small as a prototype I made on RPG Maker. A while later, I decided to sort it out and get Linux running on one of my machines. Candidate for this arduous task was this little trooper. This is my GBD Pocket 2, and when I got it, I was using Windows 10 on it. And when I say use, I'm using the most lax form of the definition. Windows 10 wasn't really working that well on it. It was hard enough with how cumbersome it was to get used to how small the mouse and keyboard are on this thing. For the most part, this little device was collecting dust, I just couldn't use it in any practical way. So I thought I might as well install Linux on it and use it to port my games from there, making some use of it without installing Linux on my main machines. The distro I went for was Zorin OS. It was specifically made for people coming from Windows or Mac OS. To my surprise, Linux actually worked better on it than Windows ever did. I was getting better battery life somehow, the amount of RAM used was not that high, and the system generally was running a lot lighter. I did not expect to like it, and it felt like it was a right place in the right time kind of thing. Around the same time, two things were happening in the computer world. The Steam Deck was generating hype for itself and mainstream curiosity in Linux gaming, and Microsoft teased some of the earliest previews of Windows 11. Any Windows user would know, whenever there's a new version of Windows out there, there will always be mixed thoughts regarding the changes. Personally, I tend to be open to the changes. I kinda like Windows 11's look. It wasn't very different to Windows 10. A little softer, more rounded, and I thought moving the start button to the center looked pretty cool. But my issues with 11 was more with Microsoft and less with the operating system. First off, Microsoft Microsoft previously stated that Windows 10 would be their last version of Windows. Any updates will be incremental. The departure for Windows 10 wasn't only going back on their word, but they also decided to strip a bunch of features from it to accommodate the update. And more insult to injury is that older machines that lacked a certain trusted platform module, or TPM, I can't pretend to know what a TPM is, but all I know is that it's some security measure of some sort. But hey, Windows 10 will be supported for 5 more years, so that's going to make everything okay. And it's not like I didn't give Windows 11 a chance. I did. I already rumbled enough about it in a previous video, but to keep things short, it drove me off the system entirely. Zorin wasn't where I settled. It actually got me more curious about what Linux had to offer. I went to try Pop OS and Manjaro. Pop OS, like Zorin, is based off of Ubuntu. I found it to be very straightforward, but its interface was much more Linux-centric. I know I could have just installed a different desktop environment on Zorin and would have had the same result, but I just wanted to try something else. Pop OS became my favorite distro for laptops as it used the screen real estate in interesting ways. 
Manjaro is a little different. Unlike Zorin and Ubuntu, Manjaro is based on Arch Linux. Arch Linux is more attuned for deep customization. It's known to have a very steep learning curve. But if you have the know-how for it, you will have control on the system inside out. Not like the other distros don't give you ample amounts of customization, but this one is built for it. Manjaro is built on that, but making it a little more straightforward to use. It's not like they sacrificed that to make Manjaro, far from it. They only made it a little easier by letting you download the installation image with the desktop environment of your choice. Since I've used Zorin and Pop! OS, I've become more accustomed to GNOME. To me, Manjaro has the best of both Zorin and Pop! OS with its own bit of spark to make it a little different. So does that make Zorn not good anymore? I would wholeheartedly disagree. For a starting OS, I think Zorn is a perfect stepping stone to the world of Linux. It's easy to understand given that it looks a lot like Windows and Mac, and it's built on a super solid foundation thanks to Ubuntu. I really like Zorn's welcoming approach to transitioning from those two operating systems, and they build the OS to last you a while. It comes in a bunch of versions, but all are in both paid and free versions. As far as I understand it, the paid and free versions are the same with the only difference is that the paid version has a few pre-installed software as a bonus. The paid version also includes Mac OS and Windows 11 layouts. If you're on a modern machine, Zorin Core is recommended, but if you're working on a computer with two gigabytes of RAM or less, they got you covered with Zorin Lite. All I know is that Core uses GNOME and Lite uses some form of XFCE. Zorin claims that the Lite can run on machines as old as 15 years old, and I love that they include no TPM required on their website. It's just... <clears throat> Below that, there's a quote from the city of Vicenza, Italy. I think that's how you pronounce it. Vicenza. Because of the lower hardware requirements of Zorin OS alone, we're expecting to extend the life of the city's PCs by 30 to 40%. Longtime friend and Rose's music composer Ashley Kamta told me that he had installed Zorin for his parents' computer and says they like it very much. Now that I harped enough about all the good things in Linux, I think it's time I talked about the problems I still face. I still didn't figure out how to get Windows software to run on Linux. I am lucky that most of my vital software either runs natively or is on Steam. Proton made things a lot easier Easier the moment I figured out how to make it run. Proton is Steam's own version of the aforementioned Wine. It's what's used to get Windows-based games to run on Linux and the Steam Deck. If the game or software is on Steam, chances are it will work at least quite alright. Windows software outside of Steam can't exactly work with Proton, sadly. I will try to run Windows on some form of virtual machine to get that to work. And that is if I have no other possible way to get Scrivener or Scapel to run. My biggest problem though is that I miss Parsec. I still say no machine machine is a very good alternative, but still not a replacement. It needs so much setting up to get it to run, and I have experienced far less hiccups with Parsec. But alas, still no Parsec hosting on Linux. Apart from the GPD Pocket 2, I've had some really odd battery issues with my other laptops. The Dell would either freeze or shut down seconds after the first low battery warning. I keep needing to have the charger on standby if I needed to keep it on. My other laptop is an MSI Modern. It is much more forgiving about my charging reaction, but it takes a bit of a while to realize that it's charging. I would plug the charger in and it will start charging within the next few minutes or so. One other weird problem I found that it was sometimes when charging would slowly lower the screen brightness on its own. Other than that, most of my issues have been fairly trivial. Despite all that, for the time being, I don't see myself going back to Windows. There's far too much bloat over there, and I don't like a lot of the decisions made for that system. And that's all I got to say about my experience with Linux in this duration. I might make a follow-up video in the future, but that remains to be decided. Are you a Linux user? Did the video make you curious about moving to Linux? What distro are you on? Like, comment, and subscribe. Roses Will Rise is a turn-based strategy RPG with visual novel elements. While the main game is free, it's supported by my generous patrons. You too can support me by going to my Patreon, and if you'd rather support me with a one-time payment, you can buy Roses Will Rise on my HEO. You don't need to buy the game to play it, but supporting me will give you a bunch of goodies. And thank you for watching.